Well, that was fun, but it's time to get back in the grand sweep of things. We've got a whole 3D Sonic marathon to cover. During the mid-90s, Sega had a console called the Saturn, which for various reasons didn't do too well against its competition, the Sony PlayStation, and the Nintendo 64. After Sonic and Knuckles, there wasn't really a mainline Sonic game for quite a while. The Sega Saturn most notably didn't have a true Sonic game. There was a port of a Genesis game called Sonic 3D Blast, a racing game called Sonic R, and a compilation of the original Genesis games called Sonic Jam. But there was no new Sonic game. Franchises like Mario and Zelda had come and already successfully made the jump to 3D with classics such as Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. But what was taking Sonic so long? Well, there was going to be one called Sonic Extreme. For various reasons that would take too long to go into, Sonic Extreme was cancelled. It's unfortunate, but based on what I've seen, I'm not feeling it's lost too much. Though my heart goes out to the people who worked so hard only to see it all come up so short. So what was Sega and Sonic team to do? Sonic needed a fresh start. A reinvigoration. To get inspiration for the idea of the adventure, Sonic team decided to travel the world, heading to various locations in Central and South America. The team became inspired and thus put these settings into the game. Sonic Team also took to redesigning the characters. Sonic went from his classic look to his modern day green eyes look. This was done because Sonic's original design was meant to be seen from the side, so Sonic's modern design was to allow you to see things from a 3D perspective. When Sonic Adventure was first released in 1998 in Japan, it had a lot of problems. The camera was buggy, plenty of glitches and control was off. And that's why Sega learned to never rush out Sonic games ever again. So Sonic Team decided to fix all this for the American release a year later. So, would Sonic Adventure do justice to the series? Would it capture everything we loved about Sonic in a three-dimensional plane like Super Mario 64 did for Mario? Well, when Sonic Adventure came out in 1999, the answer seemed to be... Yes. Look at its scores for the original Dreamcast version. Mostly 8s. Pretty good. Sonic Adventure would later get a port to the GameCube in 2003 called Sonic Adventure Deluxe Director's Cut. That's redundant. It would get an Xbox Live and a PlayStation Network HD port in 2010. Oddly, this time reviews were... not so good. What happened? Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time have stood the test of time and remain classics to this day. But not this? I wonder. Well, it's time to bring out the Dreamcast and find out. Yes, the footage you are seeing is from the original Dreamcast version. I could have captured from the Xbox Live version, but it just felt right for this review. It opens with a shot of the city, and as a kid, my jaw dropped when I first saw this. That almost looked like a real city. Then the streets are suddenly overflowed with water and you get the title. Get your blood pumped. You're ready to go. You're ready to play the game. That's how you do it. Well, to start off, you can play as six playable characters. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and newcomers Big the Cat and E-102 Gamma. Six playable characters, that seems like a little much. But each character is a part of the story this time around. That's what we'll be covering first. Let's begin with Sonic. Let's get him! So we get a shot of the city station square where we see a bunch of police cars chasing somewhere, as well as a ball of light. It's then that we get reintroduced to Sonic, with voice acting this time. Oh yeah! This is happening! Oh god, look at that lip syncing. It's poor. I would blame the technology of its time, but... No, there was lip syncing on the PS1 that was better than this. Sonic notices the police cars and decides to investigate. The police encounter a strange water creature but are unable to stop him. Sonic intervenes and defeats the strange creature known as Chaos while Dr. Robotnik looks on. Time for a quick backstory. 
One night, while Knuckles is contemplating his fate as the guardian of the Master Emerald, said Emerald is broken into pieces, and Knuckles sees this water creature appear and tries to attack him, but is thrown back pretty hilariously. So Knuckles' story is trying to find the missing pieces of the Master Emerald and put it back together. Meanwhile, Sonic is relaxing by the pool when he knows his tails crash land into the ocean. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Oh boy, that face. So Sonic rescues Tails, who's been testing a new plane, and has even found a Chaos Emerald. Ah, that face! What is wrong with your face?! So Sonic and Tails head to Tails' workshop in the Mystic Ruins, where they are met by Robotnik. I am Dr. Robotnik, the greatest scientific genius in the world! Whatever you say, Eggman! Alright. Somebody pointed out to me that I screwed up. In my Sonic 1 review, I said that his name was changed from Robotnik to Eggman, when that's not the case. In Japan, his name was always Eggman, then changed to Robotnik in America. Well, it doesn't really matter, because both names are officially canon now, so you can call him whatever you want. I'll be calling him Robotnik for this review, and then I'll be calling him Eggman, starting from Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic and Tails defeat Robotnik, or Eggman, but Tails runs forward with an emerald, and Robotnik grabs it. Pretty sure you could have stopped that. Robotnik gives Chaos the Emerald, which increases his string, so now Sonic and Tails have to find the rest of the missing Emeralds before Robotnik does. Sonic and Tails find two of the Emeralds, but they get stolen by Robotnik, who gasses them unconscious. Meanwhile, Knuckles finds himself in the same location, and comes across Sonic and Tails unconscious, and his reaction is pretty much just... Huh. I mean, that's it? You're not even gonna wake them up? Knuckles finds Robotnik and chases after him. After a fight with Chaos 2, Robotnik tricks Knuckles into thinking that Sonic is after the Master Emerald as well because, you know, Robotnik is TOTALLY trustworthy, right Knuckles? You freaking idiot. Sonic and Tails find another Emerald and come across Knuckles who attacks them thinking they have the Master Emerald. After a brief scuffle, Sonic and Knuckles' fight knocks the Chaos Emeralds out of Sonic, leaving Robotnik to pick them up and Knuckles realizes he's been tricked. Way to go, Knucklehead! My sentiments, exactly! So after a fight with the newly powered Chaos 4, Robotnik's flying carrier, the Egg Carrier, shows up. Sonic and Tails give pursuit in the tornado, while Knuckles decides to continue searching for the Master Emerald. The tornado is shot down, and Sonic and Tails are separated. Tails has a dream where he's chasing Sonic, but unfortunately Sonic is just too fast for him to catch up. It's actually a pretty sad scene, but it shows just how much Tails looks up to Sonic. Tails needs a Chaos Emerald to power up the Tornado 2, and gives chase to a frog in a jungle. After catching the frog, a huge cat shows up and scares the bejesus out of Tails. Oh, that's right, I forgot about Big. Big is a cat that lives in Mystic Ruins who doesn't do anything but fish with his frog, Froggy. Not very creative names. But one night, something from Chaos merged with Froggy, giving him a tail, and he swallowed a Chaos Emerald, so now Big is looking for Froggy. Tails just brushes it off and takes off in the Tornado too. Meanwhile, Sonic lands in Station Square and goes looking for Tails. At that time, Amy is wandering Station Square after shopping for food, when suddenly a bird comes down and smacks Amy in the head. At that time, a robot appears named Zero. <laughs> no, not that Zero. That Zero is cool. Amy hides from Zero and resolves to protect her bird friend from the robot. At that point, Amy encounters Sonic and demands his protection. As Sonic and Amy are walking, Zero appears. Sonic's ready to take him on, but Amy gets distracted. Whoa! Oh, now what? Huh? Look here! Really, Amy? A giant robot is after you, and you're more focused on the fact that you can get into a joyride with Sonic? No wonder Sonic runs away from you. Sonic pursues Amy, who is captured by Zero. Sonic sees this and gives pursuit, but is unable to save Amy from being teleported into the egg carrier. Sonic gives pursuit. Meanwhile, Big and Knuckles follow a strange robot to the egg carrier's location after the robot steals Froggy away from Big. More on him in a minute. Sonic is picked up by Tails in the Tornado 2, and the two manage to successfully land on the Egg Carrier. This robot, E-102 Gamma, is one of the latest E-Line robots created by Robotnik. Robotnik pits Gamma against his brother Beta, and when Gamma defeats Beta, Robotnik assigns them both to the Egg Carrier. After Gamma successfully retrieves Froggy, 
Robotnik banishes the other E-Series robots from the egg carrier and tells Gamma to retrieve the bird that Amy is protecting. Inside, he notices Beta being modified, but then confronts Amy in her cell. He tells her to give him the bird, but Amy refuses. Gamma does not understand why Amy won't give him the bird. When the bird flies in Gamma's face, Gamma starts to malfunction and then allows Amy to escape, though he's not sure why he's doing this. So everyone's story pretty much converges on the egg carrier. Robotnik corners Amy when Sonic and Tails come to the rescue. Robotnik takes the Chaos Emerald from the bird and leaves our heroes to Gamma. As they fight, Amy stops the fight, asking Sonic to let Gamma go. Sonic agrees, it's then that the egg carrier begins losing altitude. Sonic tells Tails to take Amy and leave, while he leaves to take on Robotnik. Amy manages to convince Gamma that Robotnik is not the man he should be working for as they all escape. Sonic gives pursuit to Robotnik and finds that he's merged Chaos's tail and now has six Chaos Emeralds. Sonic helps Big rescue Froggy, who escapes the egg carrier on the Tornado 2. Sonic defeats Chaos 6 when Knuckles arrives, having recovered the last pieces of the Master Emerald. Sonic chases after Robotnik while Knuckles is left to deal with Chaos 6. Knuckles defeats Chaos 6 and takes the six Chaos Emeralds back with him to Angel Island, where he restores the Master Emerald, and Angel Island again rises into the sky. There's so much he doesn't know about why he's been left to assign the job of guarding the Master Emerald, but perhaps it's better left unknown. Gamma lands in the Mystic Ruins, and decides to rescue the E-Series robots by destroying them and freeing the animals trapped inside. He does so, but realizes he still has himself and Beta the Free. After destroying the upgraded Beta, Gamma realizes that the birds locked inside himself and Beta are a family, and thus he sacrifices himself to free the trapped bird. Meanwhile, Amy and Tails land in Station Square. Amy decides to help the bird find his parents, while Tails notices Robotnik crash land, who decides to just blow everyone up with a missile. But fortunately, it's a dud. Robotnik chases after the missile, but Tails is able to beat him to it. Robotnik does not take it too well and tries to crush Tails. But Tails is able to prove himself a hero in his own right as he defeats Robotnik and sends him out of the city. Meanwhile, Amy gets through a battle of her own as she is attacked by Zero one last time, who attacks Amy's bird friend. Amy is able to defeat Zero, and the bird family is reunited. Meanwhile, Sonic lands in the Mystic Ruins and heads inside a lost temple chasing that mysterious ball of light. Okay, some backtracking here. Throughout the game, this ball of light has interrupted the characters and sent them into the distant past when Knuckles the Kidna race still thrived. We see a girl named Tikal who pleads with her father not to attack the other villages and steal the Chaos Emeralds, but her father, being a massive tool, doesn't listen to her. Tikal spends time with the Chow, this race of little things, and meets their guardian, Chaos. However, it became apparent that Chaos was anger and destroyed the world, which is what Sonic finds in his own vision. I must say it's rather odd that Tikal shows these visions to characters like Big and Gamma, who have no emotional connection to any of it. The character who gets the most flashbacks is Knuckles, which makes the most sense since he is an echidna. Maybe I'm just reading too deep into this. Anyway, Sonic flashes out of the trance and notices Robotnik fleeing into his base. He gives pursuit and the two have a final confrontation. Sonic defeats Robotnik, who escapes to fight another day, and Sonic and Tails celebrate their victory. Hot damn! That is one hell of an upgrade compared to the Genesis games! Every character feels involved, and several of them go through character arcs. Sonic Team even took the time to properly write out everyone's stories so the continuity matches. For example, when playing as Big, you can find Amy about ready to go shopping. The story isn't too hard to follow. It has some dark implications, such as the fate of the Echidnas, and as I said, some of the characters do go through arcs. Tails finally steps out from Sonic and becomes a hero in his own right, as he realizes that he can't rely on him forever. Amy goes from being helpless to finally attacking her sailor, and Gamma surprisingly has the most complex character despite being a robot, to the end where he realizes that he has to sacrifice himself to release the instant creature inside him. There's more, but I'll get into it towards the end. So as far as the presentation goes, things looked unbelievable for its time. Wonky animations aside, the graphics are crisp and colorful. Everything visually pops for its time. It was a great way to show off what the Dreamcast could do. The music is just awesome, as always. Every character now has their own unique theme song this time around. A lot of them feel like they belong in an 80s rock band, but yet, strangely, it's cheesily appropriate for the series. I rather enjoy most of them. Even Open Your Heart is a great adrenaline rush. 
there's voice acting this time around. Ryan Drummond makes his debut as the voice of Sonic. He's got a good voice for Sonic, even if the acting isn't particularly memorable. But that's a problem with the voice acting in general, because the voice actors apparently weren't given much info as to the scenes they were performing. Tails' voice sounds like they just picked a kid off the side of the road and asked him to do voice acting. Dean Bristow is pretty intimidating as Robotnik. So let's get into the gameplay. With six characters, that means there's six different gameplay styles. Well, five technically. Tails is just a condensed version of Sonic's. So we're gonna start with Sonic. Sonic's levels play like they did in the Genesis games, just in 3D. Run forward, grab rings to make sure that you can take a hit, and get to the goal as fast as possible. But Sonic's got some new abilities. First and foremost is the homing attack. By pressing the jump button, Sonic will automatically home in on whatever the enemy is the closest. So this leads to a lot of enemies being arranged in a line so as to keep the speed moving. I can see why this was added. Sonic's attack in the Genesis games was just jumping, and it'd be hard to emulate that in a 3D plane. He still has the spin dash, which I don't find myself using too often, unless I want to go faster, since there are no slopes this time around. There are parts of Sonic stages where you basically just press forward on the controller and watch him go. Like in Emerald Beach, my jaw dropped at this close-up of Sonic running while the whales all jump above him. Or in Speed Highway, where Sonic starts running down the side of the building. I find that at times where you think you can just watch the action, that doesn't always work. Sonic's stages are divided into at least two sections, essentially filling the two acts like the Genesis games. Sometimes Sonic's control is a little off, like he'll automatically go to the edge of a level. Like here, where you have to jump on this snake thing while filling up the water. I swear I thought I was gonna fall off. Or Casinoopolis, where the goal is to fill up the prize area with rings. So you get to play pinball, which is something. There was a nice Knights in the Dreams cameo in there, which, to be honest, I haven't actually played. Maybe someday. Overall, Sonic's levels are the highlight of the game for me. Fun action stages that are everything a Sonic game should be. Tails' gameplay is basically a condensed version of Sonic's. His levels are shorter, he only does one section of each level, but there's a twist. He has to beat Sonic to the goal. It makes sense since this game is all about Tails stepping out of Sonic's shadow, He's got this spinning tails attack where he can attack enemies with his tails, and his flight is about the same, though his levels contain these hooch which will speed up your flying. So Tails' levels are enjoyable enough, give him a pass. Knuckles' levels. Well, his levels are a lot more open-ended since they're about exploring to find the missing Master Emerald pieces. Below you is a radar that tells you how close you are to a piece, and this time around all three pieces light up. Fortunately, there's also the decal light that can also tell you where to go if you're stuck looking. Knuckles can still glide and climb walls like he could in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. You have to get very fortunate that some of the pieces are right next to each other. They can be anywhere, lying in plain sight, inside an enemy, or you have to dig. More on that in a minute. Knuckles can now punch enemies, which makes sense. Also, I gotta say, I really hate Skydeck and Knuckles' version because you have to tilt the stage to be able to access some areas of the ship. So, Knuckles' levels are an experiment. Hopefully they improve upon it. Amy's levels. Well, she's got zero chasing after her, so the goal of her levels is to get to the balloon at the end of the level to escape. Amy runs slow, but she does have a trick to jump higher when running with her hammer out. If you press the hammer button, Amy will flip up into the air. Amy can't destroy Zero, she can only knock him down with her hammer. So Amy's levels are all about platforming. Not much to really say about them, just okay. Not memorable, but passable. Gamma's levels are an on-the-rail shooter. You have to shoot everyone in sight to reach the target at the end. Sounds simple, right? Well, there's a timer. You have about five minutes to complete a level. To extend the timer, you constantly hold down the trigger button to destroy anything that comes at you. The more you destroy, the more time you are rewarded. Fortunately, Gamma's levels typically don't last too long. He usually fights a boss battle at the end of his levels. But now I've saved the worst for last, and that's... Big's levels. Ugh. Yeah, the goal of Big's levels is to fish for your friend Froggy. That's it. That's all you have to do. Doesn't sound too hard, right? Well, it can get very tedious very quickly. The fishing is annoying to bop and control your line. You're constantly trying to get the Froggy, but sometimes a fish gets in your way. It's like, go away! I don't want you! Ugh, I really don't know why these were put in. These are the worst levels in the whole game, bar none. Characters can get upgrades, which are emphasized by them putting on a bracelet or gloves. 
For example, Sonic can follow trail rings to access new locations. This is clunky in execution, though it's a great concept, as it's annoying to have to charge up your spin dash to do it. Knuckles gains the ability to dig into solid dirt, which is something. It's nice that in future playthroughs, the characters' appearances change to accommodate their upgrades in the cutscenes. However, there's one aspect of Sonic Adventure that hasn't aged well, and that's the camera. The camera is just awkward to control. The Dreamcast didn't have a second analog stick, so you have to press the back buttons to control the camera, and the angles can be pure crap. Fortunately, this doesn't lead to cheap deaths like would plague later titles in the series. Super Mario 64 had a tough camera, but it was a sign of the times. I suppose I'll get more into it when we get to... that game. There are boss battles, and I find them all to be pretty easy. You start with a boss fight against Chaos Zero. The camera's so close and the spaces are so constrained. He only takes three hits. In fact, all the bosses go down in four or five hits. The only one that has a bit more time and thought put into it is the final boss of the Sonic story, Egg Viper. Also, you fight Chaos 4 three times with Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. That's way too much. There are some character boss battles, but these are so pathetic I wonder how they got past the design stage. Oh no. That says it all. But the action stages are only half the game. The other half is getting to the levels, and that's what the adventure maps are for. You have three. Station Square, which is just a large city, Mystic Ruins, which is a jungle, and the Egg Carrier. There are NPCs to talk to, but they are really not that helpful or interesting to talk to. You have to find the levels for each action zone. This usually involves grabbing something like a key or a card to get into the level. I know the game is called Sonic Adventure, but these feel like a waste of time and effort. Sonic Adventure also has plenty of mini-games if you want to indulge yourself. There's the Sand Hill mini-game, the Bumpers Cars mini-game, the Whack a Hedgehog, so there's plenty of stuff to do. There's not a whole lot to say about them, but they're there if you want to play them. But there's a game in and of itself with the Chow Garden. Basically, you can grow your own Chow to use as a pet. They start off in egg form, and how do you hatch these things? Oh, okay. So you can power up your Chow with the various animals you find in stages. The only thing you can do is send them into races. Also, you're supposed to be able to use them in virtual memory units, the things that came with the Dreamcast, but I don't know. Right now, this isn't working. Finally, that leads us into the emblems. Oh boy, the emblems. These flashy things are attained by doing stuff in the game. Typically by completing an action stage, or some you can find in adventure mode. Sometimes you have to go the extra mile. Usually there's getting 50 rings in addition to completing the stage, or not using the hint balls to find the Master Emerald. Or in Big's case, catch a bigger fish. Yeah, not doing that. Besides, you'd expect an awesome reward for all your trouble, right? Well, what do you get for all your trouble if you get all 130 emblems? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Well, let's just move on to the final story. After beating all six stories, you unlock a final story, Super Sonic. We open with a shot of Angel Island falling into the sky once again while Robotnik is going all... I hate that hedgehog! But then he comes across Chaos. Knuckles is confused because Angel Island shouldn't still be falling when he notices Robotnik on the ground. Robotnik says something about Chaos, then Knuckles notices Chaos' puddle. Meanwhile, Sonic is relaxing over a job well done when Tails tells him that Angel Island has fallen again. Sonic and Tails immediately head over to Angel Island and find Robotnik and Knuckles. Knuckles tells them that Chaos is still alive, as Robotnik heads out to deal with Chaos on his own. Just as Sonic and Tails are about to head off for the Master Emerald, the Tikal Ball of Light flashes in front of him. Sonic awakens to find himself in the distant past, where he witnesses the world in ruins. Tikal's father continues to be a massive dick and forces his way past Tikal, trampling the Chow in the process. Chaos appears and pretty much kills everyone. This is a kid's game, right? Oh well. Sonic witnesses to call an act of chant that seals herself in chaos inside the Master Emerald. Sonic wakes up, and he and Tails head out to find the last emerald. They arrive, only for chaos to steal the last emerald right out from under them. So the day proceeds as normal in Station Square, but suddenly giant waves of water come crashing down all over the city, as perfect chaos takes form, no doubt killing hundreds if not thousands of people. At least that's what I infer happens here. Sonic confronts Chaos when Robotnik comes after Chaos with an egg carrier tube that he made specifically in case something like this happened. Why didn't you just whip that out after Sonic beat you? 
But Perfect Chaos shoots him down, sending Robotnik flying away. Sonic is then met by the ball of light, finally revealing herself to be Tikal. Tikal tells him of how Chaos is filled with anger and sadness, and that he has absorbed the Chaos Emeralds, leaving them husks. He must be sealed, but Sonic argues against it because it won't do anything about Chaos' anger and sadness, which I guess does show that Sonic still has compassion for his enemies. It's then that all the other characters bring the Chaos Emeralds to Sonic, and they explain that he can use the power of friendship and love and all that good stuff. Sonic uses the Emeralds to turn into Super Sonic and engages Perfect Chaos in the final battle. What can I say about the final battle? Well, it's actually really easy. All you have to do is dodge Perfect Chaos' attacks and run into him at full speed, which doesn't take much. He only takes 6 hits, but what I will give this fight credit, the atmosphere is awesome. You're in a destroyed city with water flowing everywhere and destroyed buildings, all with Open Your Heart playing for the Dreamcast? It looks pretty damn impressive. So anyway, Sonic beats Chaos, who reverts back to normal. Takal appears and tells him that the Chow he's been protecting now live peacefully with humans. The fighting's over, harmony's restored, and life goes on. So Takal and Chaos ascend into heaven or go back to their own time or go somewhere. I don't know, it's pretty vague. All's well that ends well, right? The city has been destroyed and countless people are dead. You suck, Tails. Before we end this, let's take a brief look at Sonic Adventure Deluxe for the GameCube, because it adds some new modes to the game. Most notably, Mission Mode, which means you have to complete various tests. Oh look, there's a Sonic X poster in this game, which was about to come out at the time. Boy, that takes me back. Maybe I should review that show someday. There's also a new camera option, but I can barely get it to work. So not much to say about it. You can also play all the Game Gear Sonic games. That's not much of a reward. You also do get something for getting all the emblems in this version of the game. You get to play as Metal Sonic. Don't get too excited. He's just a skin of Sonic. Although he actually does make a cameo along with Silver Sonic in Robotnik's base in the Mystic Ruins. Hmm, foreshadowing? So that's Sonic Adventure. Now, it hasn't aged particularly well, but in its heyday, this was a pretty good game. I think the issue with Sonic Adventure is that there are tons of technical flaws that prevent the game from fully taking the steps into greatness. So why is it that Super Mario 64 has largely been considered to stand the test of time while Sonic Adventure has not? Hmm... For now, I can't answer that. It's something to get into when I cover... that game. But for its time, it did its job. Sonic was back for a whole new generation, but would it be enough to save the Dreamcast? Well, join me for the next one. We're going to be playing Sonic Adventure 2. Thanks for watching, this is Retrospect Greg signing off. Have yourselves a fantastic day, please hit that like and subscribe button, and take care.